Hello everybody again. Assalamu alaikum and azul. <laughs> My name is Kinza. I am traditional weaver and an artisan. I am from Ait Hamza, a small village in the middle of Atlas Mountains in Morocco. Yeah, in Morocco. <laughs> I have founded an association called Tithrit with the women from my village with the goal of protecting our products from the abuse of middlemen. At first, getting the association's work started was really difficult for many reasons. The first one, we live in a relatively conservative region. The women work and go outside, but the man remains the final decision maker. Yeah, the man who, who do everything. The women work, but the man who do everything. The second thing, we also found difficulties to sell our products beyond the weekly local markets. And that's why we had no other ch ch choice but to sell to middlemen or in expositions. So, for the middlemen, they monopolized our profits. Yeah, yeah, this is a woman in Morocco, artisanal in Morocco, crafts. Uh, while in exposition, at the exposition, we lose time and money without any good return. To give you an idea about the big picture, the Moroccan handicrafts market exceeds $2 billion in sales per year and growing. Meanwhile, the number of artisans like me is declining year over year, and most of the artisans left live in poverty. Let me give you an example. Let's say you are in a Moroccan market and you buy a carpet for $100. In your opinion, how much of that price will go to the artisan that made it? $50? $20? $10? No, the average is only $4. Yes. Indeed, the middleman takes 96%. Remember this number, 96% of the price on average. So now we, we know the problem, what is? What are the solutions? One of the solutions is something you've heard about a lot, fair trade organizations. One of the solutions is something, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. This program uh, gives the artisan 20% and remaining 80% goes to the management of these organizations. So all the time, the artisans still marginate. <laughs> yes, it's one of the solutions, but does it really solve the problem? Does it make the artisan thrive? Surely no. So we need a better solution. That solution is ANU. ANU, this platform, ANU. What is ANU? ANU is an e-commerce platform. Here are three things to remember about it. The first, it's owned by artisans. And thus, 80% of the price goes to the artisans that makes the product. And 20% 20 go, uh, 20 goes mostly to the artisans to pay, to pay them of their management uh, of the platform. The second thing, it's managed by artisans. The ANU team is made mostly of artisan leaders that manage the work that the middlemen used to do. The third thing, it's technology-based. It enables illiterate, illiterate artisans even if it's, it's technology-based, 
but it can enable illiterate uh, artisans to sell their products directly, automate a lot of the work middlemen traditionally do. Leave me to give you a demonstration of how the website works. This is what the, the website looks like. This is the first, this is the first. The, this is the homepage. This, uh, the other one, this is the product page where you can find photos of, of products, the price according to shipping destination, the name, photo, and description of artisans that made the product, a description of type of product and dimensions. You will also find information about the material and the tools used and other products by the association. As you can see, each cooperative has its own store. For example, this is the store of Titrit, of my association. And this is the seller dashboard where cooperatives manage their store. As you say, as you, you say, you, you, you say that the, only the colors without, uh, without languages, without anything, only colors and uh, uh, isharat. Well. Yes. They can access and modify products and checks, check their sales. Here, this page is for our ceiling. Or they can add a new product in 10 steps. The first one, we choose the type of product. The second, the second step, they add five pictures for each product. Third steps, step, they choose the colors of the products. Then they choose uh, tools and materials used in production. After that, they, they choose which artisan made it as they are notified by SMS when the product is sold. Yeah. Then here, this page, they enter the weight, the dimensions, and the price they want to sell the, pro the, uh, the product for. By the way, the, by the, way, the artisan receives 100% uh, of this product. There is no average for middlemen here. <laughs> then they choose the type of shipping. Yeah. And finally, the system calculates all the price. We created this simple language free system on the website and we are even applying it to real world. That way it's able to support the enable artisans. For example, the artisan can send a shipping slip to a WhatsApp number and it scans the shipping number. But Creating market access is not enough. Artisans need to administer it. Do the job the middleman traditionally did. And do it better than them. Yes, yes, we should do that. <laughs> For having our profit. That's why we created the concept of artisan leaders. This is the our team. Once the product is on the website and we get an order, the, artisans, uh, the artisan gets notified to ship it to the office, where one of our artisan leaders does one friendly inspection to ensure quality and then send it to the customer. Before sending the product to the customer, we inspect it in the office 
After that, we, uh, we send it. Here is how our inspection, how our inspection app works. This is the order page where we track orders thanks to these icon, icons. The check icon show, shows the results of inspection done by artisan leaders. This is the inspection, the inspection app. There are uh, six things to check before approving a product. The weight, the dimensions, does the product look like the pictures? Does the product have a quality issue? Is the product old or is it uh, dirty? Moreover, beyond improving sales and profits for artisans, ANU gives artisans the opportunity to develop their personal skills and to master their crafts through a new kind of customer that's more demanding in terms of design and dimensions. The, the goal be, being for each artisan to become, to become a business person, master at, of their craft and abilities. All of this gives Moroccan artisans today the opportunity to be independent to sell directly to the customer and to develop his or her craft. Provided they invest time and effort in to ANU. That way, ANU is artisan owned and artisan run. Despite, uh, despite this, there is still much work to do, to be done. There are uh, still a lot of middlemen and other new middlemen like startups that exploit artisans. Which means ANU still has more work to do to expand this opportunity. In order to do that, ANU has two big plans for this year. The first one, we are opening our first store in Old Medina in F of Fez. Yes. Where most middlemen are located. <laughs> the goal is to give visibility to Anno beyond the internet and ensure artisans always have success, uh, have access to customers locally, locally and abroad. The second thing, to go further, we, 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 uh, we want to make product quality our competitive edge. So to make sure ANU has the best quality products of the market, we are working on two things again. The supply of materials. There is no wool on the market that is good enough. That is our conclusion after uh, testing every wall on, the, on all markets in Morocco. And that is why ANU is opening its own wall factory in 2020. The second thing is the process. We developed our own dye, uh, wall dye facility and we have mastered the dye process to, produ to produce the best results. So, what can the future look like when we realize all of, all of this and change how the Moroccan craft economy works? I already know the answer from my little experience thus far. From my, pers uh, my perspective as a woman artisan, Working with ANU, it has already drastically changed both the living conditions and the mindsets of the women that invest, invested time and effort in it, me included. That's why I'm here.
it has made us financially independent and able to provide for our families. One good example of the impact working with ANU had is the example of Ito. Ito is one woman we, in our association. I think you can, you can show it in the picture. About Ito, so, okay, sorry. Ito's kids, Hussein, is disabled and normally would not be able to find work. But Ito fought hard for him and funded his education thanks to her income from Anu. Yes, Hussein today got his baccalaureate and agree in woodwork. He is planning to open his wood workshop and ultimately join the Anu community, inshallah. Moreover, Anu has also made women actors of, civility, uh, of civil society and powerhouses in their communities. With the women, uh, with the women of Tithrit Association and the money from Anu Seals, we have organized health care caravans. We have provided the community with trust bins and organized campaigns about the environment. We have also funded excellence prizes and plant trees in schools. We, we are planning and hoping to do so much more in the future, inshallah. My story and the, and the work of ANU shows what happens when you invest in artisans rather than just helping them, not stolen them. By supporting ANU, you can ensure that all artisans in Morocco can have future with crafts, and that craft itself thrives. In the end, I want to, to say a happy Women's Day to mom, to all the women in the world, and thank you, Tanmirt. Thank you.